Joe Rogan, Alex Jones, Glenn Greenwald, Julian Assange. Why is the mainstream so obsessed with controlling dissenting voices? Why is it so obsessed with discrediting them? Why is the mainstream so fearful of ordinary people coming together in unison? <laughs> Hello there, you 5.6 million awakening wonders. Thank you for joining me on this voyage. I'm traveling around the United Kingdom at the moment. What a beautiful nation it is. But your country is glorious too. And it deserves to be run by someone beautiful like you. In community with your brothers and sisters, your aunts and uncles, your grandfathers, your grandmothers, your ancestors, spirits can rise again in a meaningful and democratic way. The first thing you can bloody well do is subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up and comment because we're going to be talking today about the thing the mainstream and the establishment fear most. Ordinary people from different classes and cultures coming together to confront real power, refusing to be distracted by the narratives of fracture that we're continually bombarded with. Now, 60% of you subscribe. I'd love the rest of you to subscribe right now. It really helps me. Turn on the notification bell if you can and sign up to our uh, mailing list. Be a part of our community. We do wonderful online events, Zoom calls, plus fantastic live real events in physical real space. You can participate with us in all of those things and become a real member of this community. I know that you need it on some level. I know that you've been suffering. I know you want the truth. I know that your whole life you've suspected there's something wrong with this system and you were right all along there is. And now we are awakening together and when we come together, we can do something about it. I spoke to Jimmy Dore, the brilliant comedian and YouTuber on my podcast, Under the Skin, available from Luminary. And Jimmy Dore is old school left. His family, they're like police officers and stuff. And I know some of you won't associate that with the left, but many professions that you used to be considered ordinary community professions like journalism, law enforcement, have either been taken over by people from elite academic backgrounds or somehow been turned into numb drone professions where ordinary people are turned against one another. In this conversation, Jimmy Dore talks about the importance of people from different political backgrounds coming together. He talks about how we've been tricked, how Biden has broken promises to ordinary people from the start of his administration, how dissenting voices like Rogan, Assange, Alex Jones, people that you might agree with or might not agree with. I don't bloody well care. It doesn't matter to me with what you think. We're all going to disagree about stuff, but what we have to get to is a point of honest and open communication. That's what I think. That's what Jimmy Dore thinks. Watch this conversation now and stay to the very end because it's fantastic. And I want you to comment below and tell me what you agree with, what you disagree with, what you think Jimmy Dore's got right, what you think I've got right, and where you think we can improve. Stay to the end. What's going on, Jimmy? What's going on? What What's happening with all, all of these new categories and condemnations? What do you think's happening? It's the same old thing. If people on the left and the right realize that they have a common enemy, if they realize that they have shared interests and they come together to work for those interests, that scares the hell out of the establishment. So they have to stop that as with, with all by any means necessary. You're seeing what they're doing to Joe Rogan. Uh, I've it, it happened to me personally. Look what they do to Glenn Greenwald. They try to pretend that you're right wing. So anybody who actually stands up for the people uh, is going to be called uh, uh, names, discredited, called right wing. Look what they're talking. Look, look what they're saying about farmers and truckers in Canada. Look what they're saying about those people. We want you to organize. Not like that. Not like that. They don't actually actually do something where you actually have power. Don't actually occupy a city uh, and you actually control it. Don't, don't do that. We want you to organize, but in a way that we can easily dismiss and not. And so just like when we did Medicare for all march, we had a Medicare for all um, uh, marches in every city in 50 major cities in the United States last summer didn't get covered by the media. None of the Democratic politicians show up and half the people who say they claim to support Medicare for all in the United States did not show up, including the nurses union. So uh, I don't think there's really a left anymore in the United States for any 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 way. And if you ever do stand up against the oligarchs and unite with other workers, uh, they will try to discredit you and squash you. And that's exactly what happens every time. Uh, you know, when people say they want to organize, right? People always love that. It's a big buzzword in the United States around lefties. Organ they have to have to organize. And yeah, we did organize. We got the squad elected. We got AOC elected, Pramila Jayapal, Ro Khanna. We got all these people elected, Cori Bush, and now they're not doing anything. So they keep telling you, just go back and keep organizing. And what they don't realize is when they say organize along class lines, 
So what is organizing? Around? I've been in unions my whole life. I know what organizing around class lines means. And here's what it doesn't mean. You don't go to the fl shop floor and go, who here is a libertarian? You're out. Who here is a Trumper? You're out. Who here is a Boogaloo boy? You're out. Who here is a Proud boy? You're out. Okay, now we're going to organize with who's ever left. That is not how organizing works. They know that's not how organizing works. And so when people actually do do actual organizing and they connect with people, People on both sides of the aisle around common interests, that's the scariest thing to them. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. You've actually answered it. Okay. <laughs> literally, that is the <laughs> that's literally the experience. When you say you um, forgive me for not knowing because I'm a fan of your uh, YouTube stuff. Um and uh I love what you do on your channel and how you communicate. I really do. And I also saw it when you had Glenn Greenwald on and you stuck up for me. I appreciate that as well. Thank you. And I, just... I was sticking up. I was sticking up for everybody. Uh, you know, it, that doesn't matter. It's about the principle. You know, I defend Alex Jones's right to freedom of speech. I defend yours. I defend Joe Rogan's. I defend Glenn Greenwald's Julian Assange, most importantly. And yeah. those, those are the people that the establishment don't want us uh, to defend their freedom of speech. And so, and right back at you, I'm a big fan of your show. I'm very jealous of your popularity. <laughs> I was talking to my YouTube liaison and I said to him, I said, Hey, you know, I know we're being suppressed. How, look at Russell Brand, look at all the views he's getting. And we're talking about the same things and he's killing it. And the guy says to me, Jimmy, Russell Brand's a huge star with millions of followers. And I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot. That's right. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. Well, that that at least so that that remnant and significant part of me that is still egoic really, really appreciates that. I, um, Jimmy, there's loads of things I want to ask you about, but like it's something you just touched upon in your response there that it's not about any particular person; it's about a set of values and principles. This migration of principles is something that we're, um, you know, the the easy dismissal of an a principle is something that I'm noticing again and again that people will say. This is what we believe in. Oh, but not in this instance. You know, one, when we've been doing videos, for example, around uh, around mandates, one of the things I've continually said and I've been careful to say because I'm aware of the kind of restrictions that exist or even around conversation in this area is try to forget for a moment what the subject is. Just think about the principle, the principle of freedom and autonomy. If we put them aside at this moment, we don't know where else it might may be applied even if you agree in this instance with the subject you know like say with the truckers you know, like what's do you think this speaks to a deeper theme of a kind of cultural nihilism that people don't have any real values or our media don't have any real values or the values that they do have are so dominated by the pursuit of profit and the pre-existing relationships between government big business and media that everything is a kind of posture and nothing is real nothing has any sort of meat on its bones oh that's exactly right they of course they, they everyone pretends to care about the right things. That's what virtue signaling is all about. You virtue signal. That's why, you know, I have a joke in my act where I say, uh, you know, if it was 1860, the Democrats would be bragging about their first transgendered slave owner. So what they do is they're using these virtuous signals, these things like identity politics, not to help minorities or workers or poor people. They use it to keep them stuck exactly where they are and out of uh, uh, any kind of economic prosperity. So what they'll do is instead of having a white guy oppress you, they'll have a black transgendered person uh, oppress you or Pete Buttigieg, who's gay, oppress you or Rachel Maddow uh, feed you five years of unbelievable red baiting conspiracy theories that were evidence free to the point where they red baited every one of their political adversaries. So that's what, or, the, or they'll get someone like Chris Hayes who has a show, who's a nerd. They're like, he would never lie to you. He's a nerd so these are the people uh, this is what they use uh to keep everybody where they are and to keep people out of economic progress is they use identity politics and we're living in it right now i mean uh you, you don't it, that that means virtue signaling means way more than substance i just saw uh nancy pelosi has a uh she's running for re-election and you know why she's doing it she's not doing it because she's a, a megalomaniac narcissist who can't let go of power and privilege or an insider trading by the way no she's doing it for the kids she's doing it for the kids russell and if there's no one who cares more about kids than 81 year old millionaires 
I happen to know that she cares mostly about her kids. Her and her husband's kids uh, are Apple and uh, Facebook (laughs) (laughs) and Slack. What did you think about that video? Do you agree with Jimmy Dore? Do you think there's a possibility? Are you as an individual willing to put aside some of your own prejudices? How can you change yourself so that you can become a participant in a movement of real change? The first thing is to acknowledge we have a problem. The second thing is to believe that change is possible. The third thing, this is what we will do together, is come up with a plan for meaningful change. I'm interested in your comments. Without you, we got nothing. I'll tell you the absolute truth. So please comment below. Give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please have a look at either of these they're fantastic videos that i know you'll enjoy become a member of my community by clicking on that link right there sign on that become a part of this movement become a part of this community there is value in your life there is purpose in your life there are things to hope for more important than any of that stuff please stay free